So for this video, we're gonna do muscles around the shoulder joint. Um, from the previous video, we've seen where the bony landmarks are around the scapula and also the back, which I've wiped off. Um, but we're now gonna see how we can layer up the muscles in this area. So the first one I'm gonna do is the infraspinatus. Infraspinatus sits just below the spine of the scapula here. It goes to the medial border all the way down to the bottom. So this whole indentation is called the infraspinous fossa and the muscle fibre direction goes to the point here to the head of the humerus or the greater tubercle of the humerus. So the muscle comes off like so and like so. I'm going to get a bit of smearing a little bit where the black is but we'll ignore that. Okay, so this is the infraspi uh, infraspinatus muscle. Okay, down the spine of the scapula, the medial border, along this lateral edge to the greater tubercle of the humerus. So that's the first one. The next one that goes along with that and has the same action, so infraspinatus does a lateral rotation of the shoulder, we have this teres minor muscle. The teres minor muscle just lies like a little finger along the side. I'm going to colour all that in and again excuse the black there. So that blue area is teres minor. Teres minor goes from this lateral edge but not the very bottom and it goes to the greater tubercle of the humerus. It works with it so if you if I drew all that the same colour it would look like the same muscle. So the teres minor also does lateral rotation of the humerus. The Teres major is, when you have a major and a minor, the major is a bigger muscle and the major sits towards the bottom end here, like so, attaches to that inferior edge and lateral edge. It runs along the teres minor, but the difference is it's going to go underneath the humerus. Okay, so this goes underneath. Now imagine the humerus is there, it's going to connect underneath and on the front surface on the bicipital groove. So now the two muscles that sound really similar, one's smaller, one's bigger, but they have two opposing actions. This teres minor does lateral rotation of the shoulder and the teres major does medial rotation of the shoulder. So two opposing actions there for those two. The next one we're going to draw is the supraspinatus. Supraspinatus lies above the spine so if that's spine anything to do with spinatus refers to a spine and it lies super supra above so it's in this indentation so uh, the superior angle like so along the spine of the scapula okay and it runs like that the fibers are going this way and they go underneath the acromion process and it comes down because this is the 3D and I've drawn a 2D, it kind of, it would attach around here, but it would be on the head, on the top of the humerus. So I'm just going to draw it just to show you. However, I kind of need another humerus that's a bit higher up. So that would be my supraspinatus. Supraspinatus is quite common to have tears in. And when we talk about impingement syndrome and with occupations where people are reaching over the head and plastering and changing lights and things like that it this tendon will get rubbed it will rub here on the acromion process you also have and if i was to draw in a different color and smear it even more around here i'm going to call that the subacromial bursa so the subacromial bursa actually stops friction but then when that gets too much friction itself it's a condition called bursitis uh, while I'm here, I'm going to draw you another soft tissue that you need on the level four course. And it goes from the occipital bone right up here to C7. Now C7 is the one that sticks out slightly more than the rest, which is here. So there's a line of ligament, like so. Anyone know what that is called? I'm just drawing it like that. From that, you get the traps coming off it. That line is the neutral line. N-U-C-H-A-L, neutral, or ligamentum nuchae. Okay, so that's quite important as well. Uh, what else can we draw on this? So let's do some traps. Let's draw the traps. 
Now the traps is going to cover all of that. So I think the best way to draw traps is to come onto this side. If that is okay with my client, he's got a little bit of lotion on this side because we've just used him for a back massage. So there's the bottom angle there. There's the top angle there. It's the border. Okay. Right then, the traps go from the occipital bone at the top. They come off this neutral ligament. It's quite thick muscle here at the top. Okay, so that's the top of the traps. Now the traps have three sections. They have the upper fibres, they have middle fibres, and they have lower fibres down this way. So I'm being, I'm drawing the upper fibres here, and that is all traps. Okay, we've got some great traps here. The traps actually come over the top and insert onto the clavicle, two thirds of the clavicle. So they're coming down this way. They're the upper fibres. Okay, so just from the direction that I've drawn the fibres, traps will do shoulder elevation like so. You can see the direction there and they're pulling on. The traps go right to that acromion process, to the point of the shoulder, and then they work their way down the spine of the scapula. So they're coming down this way off the spine and then they come halfway across this medial border. So when we do massage, maybe I'll show you on this side. When we do massage, <coughs> it's a common area to actually think there's an issue or there's a knot. But really in this area here, you're flicking over something. You're flicking over the edge of the traps. So I do explain that um, quite nicely on the upper back massage if you want to have a look at that video. So the traps come this way <clears throat> and they head down to T12. How do I find T12? Well, T7 is here, so I can count down from T7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's around here, this area. So they're going to come quite narrow to the bottom and they're going to go up this side. So it's a big muscle. I'm not going to draw it all on, but I'll draw the upper fibres here. And it comes off all of these spinous processes. The lower fibres go this way. So the lower fibres can help with depression of the shoulder. The middle fibres will help with retraction of the scapula. And the upper fibres are going to help with elevation. Uh, <clears throat> another muscle to do with elevating the shoulders is levator scapula. So levator scapula goes from, not the occipital bone, goes from C1, 2, 3, 4. C one, two, three, four. It's got four little attachments off here. It comes down and it inserts onto this top bit here of the scapula called the superior angle. So if I draw the line of the levator scapula. Okay. Levator scapula, you have one on each side. Uh, its job is to lift. Its name suggests elevation of the scapula, the right scapula. Then we're going to draw quite a big muscle, where in fact it is the largest muscle of the body. Um, will we be able to see it in yellow? Let's have a quick check. Yeah, we should be able to see it in yellow. Right, from the iliac crest at the bottom. Iliac crest is like so, coming down to the sacrum at the bottom. And you've got the spinous processes here. So the latissimus dorsi comes from all this thoracolumbar fascia, comes off the iliac crest this way. Now my client, you can hopefully see the lats here. If I get my client to try and abduct there, can we see there? We can see that line. So it's coming from there. The fibres are going this way, like so. So it's a huge muscle. It comes up to T7 and then it cuts across. It clips over the bottom of the inferior angle. This is all lats here and it comes under the arm. It twists round and attaches underneath the humerus. What else attaches underneath the humerus? This green muscle, if you remember what that was. That was a terrace major. So I'm going to draw it kind of around here, linked with it. Oops, excuse me. Feels a bit scratchy, this pen. <laughs> okay, so the fibres now are going across this way, like so. 
Okay, and the fibres are going to the armpit. So the big fold at the back of the armpit is the lats. Let me just show you here. Have a look. There, that big fold there is the lats. What I can't show you is where it attaches at the front. So latissimus dorsi. Latissimus means wide, dorsi means back. Anything else I'm missing? I like talking to myself when I'm drawing. Um, I am missing rhomboids. So rhomboids go from the medial border of the scapula here. All the way up. There's rhomboid major and minor. In fact, I'm going to do it in a different colour so we can see Ooh, what choice I have. Here we go. Um, right, so the rhomboids will be from T5 here, beginning like so, to the medial border. So the major's the bigger one, like so, coming off the spinous processes. And then just above that is the minor. So the minor's going up, and the minor goes up to about C7 here. So there's a minor and our major rhomboid. Um, what won't look the best on the video in, on this side will be a deltoid. Let's come around this side, I'll draw a deltoid on this side. So we're gonna have another green. We're gonna look like an incredible Hulk by the end of this one. So see that point there? That's the deltoid tuberosity. That's where the deltoid attaches, so that's a point. Okay, and it comes around, it comes around that chromium process like so, they're the posterior fibres and the deltoid goes around that acromion process. So we've got posterior fibres here. I'm going to draw them all the same colour, but you've got your middle fibres. And then if I was to go around the front, we'd have our anterior fibres of the deltoid. So lovely colourful picture here. Can't really fit too much more on, but hopefully that's helped you with learning and visualising the muscle attachments. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please press subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.